We've got Turkish in the building. Oh, look at that beard, man. Beard's growing How's it up, going, bro. bro. How's it going? Trust me, in it? Quarantine, I like. Jeez, Quarantine, hey. bro. The beard, I've won. <laughs> yeah, trust me, man's got the lighting ready today as well. Last time it was a bit dark out here, so I thought, let me just get the lighting ready. Oh, respect, man. Thanks for coming on, man. I know it's late, but really, really appreciate it, man. And um, did you, did, I don't know if you heard what Matt was saying there earlier about not necessarily missing football as much as he thought you. Have you been missing it? Uh, you know what, I can't lie. I've definitely been missing it, but I also understand what you're saying. As an Arsenal fan, it's not really the season to be missing. <laughs> but I can't lie, you know, just going to games is different. It's not all it's not all about winning. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's all about going to see the team you love in it. And that's what I miss first and foremost. But I know the first game back, my my first interview back, if we lose, it's gonna be it's gonna be just like the same old stuff all <laughs> over again. Do you know what I mean? All of this stuff will be forgotten. <laughs> Do you know what? Um I know that you can be a massive critic of Stan Kroenke, but have you been pleased to see what he's done this week? Um, they've kind of stepped up. He said he's going to pump money into the club to get us through this tough time. The, the executives at the club have all waived their wages. Uh, well, not all of their wages, but they've waived like a third of their wages for a year, for a whole year. Now, that's positive, isn't it? That's That's positive. That's them taking responsibility, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's definitely something. It's definitely something. But at the same time, we might just look back at it as a PR stunt, you know, because at the end of the day, any, any big corporation right now that's, that is not kind of doing what they have to do in this tough time is going to be looked down upon in the future too. So at the mm. end of the day, look at what Liverpool and Tottenham did with their furlough scheme and the U-turn. You can see what pressure and what that sort of a decision can do for your brand long term. And I feel like it is the right thing what Kronke has done. But let's see if that injection continues when we need it in football in terms. Mm. I mean, I, I don't know if uh, he hasn't really kind of made it clear. I don't know if he's saying he's going to pump money in as well that would also help to get transfers in or if that is just basically just to keep afloat, you know, you know, by yeah. paying on backroom staff and that. Exactly, yeah. It's been a bit. It's been a, the the story was a bit. It was a bit inconsistent. It didn't really nail down the facts. It was more about Kronke is giving cash injection. We don't really know towards what, how much, in what ballpark. So we'll wait to hear more news on it. To be honest, but it is it is good to hear. Don't get me wrong. Hmm. What 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 do you make of that? What me and Matt was talking about earlier, and you know what we can we can roll this out to all football teams, right? Not just Arsenal. We can roll this out to all football teams. Everybody's talking about this player, 60 million, 50 million there, 40s, hundreds. But, but this is going to be a different time now. You know, even if you're a player, like let me say with a Bamiang, even if you're a player like an Bamiang, you think, oh, I want to go somewhere and win things and stuff like that. You're now all of a sudden thinking, hey, you know what? Maybe I need to just stay where I am, man. You know what I mean? At least I, I know being at Arsenal. I'm going to get paid. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know, that is going to come into consideration, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Wages and transfer fees are all going to be affected by this. I don't, the way I look at it yeah, is in football in terms, the effect of this can be positive because some of the transfer fees and wages we're getting out of hand, Robbie. Like, we have to agree. I know you don't touch too much on wages or care too much about it, but they were getting out of hand. And the more they got out of hand, the less chance Arsenal have for silverware because we've never been financial giants in the transfer market so at the end of the day in football in terms I've got a positive outlook on the way it can affect it I think that it can affect it in a good way for teams like us dare I say it for teams like Tottenham teams like Liverpool who invest what they make and who invest what what comes in and yeah that's how I see it so it can be positive but there's definitely going to be effect 100% and obviously now as well, you talk, you're saying that, but you're just about to have another team on the horizon coming in with big money, which yeah, is yeah. Uh, Newcastle. Yeah, yeah. And to I be mean, honest with you, I, I can't. You know what? If, if any set of fans deserve a takeover uh, in, in such a manner, I think we're a close second, but they would be first because Mike Ashley has taken the utter piss out of Newcastle for the, for the last however many decades. It's been longer than a decade, so I, I don't know how long he's been in charge over there. So, in a sense, their fans 
something's on the horizon. But for us, especially us being Arsenal, let's let's hope let's hope financially we we get stable again post coronavirus to to be mm. able to deal with this influx of money that Newcastle are going to have. Let alone Man City wanting to come back and get their league title. Liverpool mm. wanting to build. Chelsea United looking to get back in. It's, it's all finance right now. Will we ever win the league? <laughs> Understand, Crump. Um, nah, 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 nah. We will never win the league. Understand, Crump. I could make a. I could. I, I could put money down now. We could never win the league. Because you know what? If, if if you look at it right, is American football teams the LA Rams? They got to the yeah. final of the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Kind of working off of a similar model to like what he's doing at Arsenal, where he hasn't pumped even though he's building that new stadium, but into the actual team, he hasn't pumped, you know, multi-millions in. Um, there was somebody saying that his Denver Nuggets team are doing really well in the basketball, got a chance of making the playoffs before everything stopped over there. Could he do a similar thing with Arsenal? You see, you see what it is with them American sports, Rob? It's all salary caps and draft picks. And at the end of the day, when you're shit one season or two seasons in a row, yeah, you're getting number one draft pick. You're getting that best player out of the youth talent. You're getting something in return for being shit. In in Premier League football, it's not like that. You're not getting nothing in return for being shit. You're going to fall further and further down the, down the line. So I think it's looking at his American side and trying to see if it can cross over to us I think it's a bit optimistic because the, the football world is very different to, to American sports so you, you you don't think under him no chance you think no no chance like if, at the end of the day salary cap and and, and um, draft picks in a sense well it's more salary cap is something I'd like to see in football or maybe coronavirus impact can bring that in in some way shape or form in terms of transfer fees and wages but I don't think Unless that happens, I don't think we are winning the league under Stan Kroenke or doing anything close to, to mm. anything we're going to be happy with anyway. It's very interesting, right? I was reading something today but from Dick Law, who, of course, used to be um, one of the guys that used to be like under Arsene Wenger. He was the transfer. He was the guy who'd done the deals and got yeah. the deal done. And he was talking about when N'Golo Kante and the reason why Arsenal didn't sign him. And um, he, said, he said, basically, he goes, the reason why they didn't, um, Arsenal didn't sign him is because of the agents, um, the money that the agents wanted. So they wanted to buy him and they yeah. put a deal in to buy him and, you know, he was more than happy to come and it was looking good. But then they found out that he had two agents and between the two agents... It was gonna. They were gonna have to pay them ten million pounds to get the deal done, and they were just like, "No, we're not doing that. We're not paying agents that amount of money." And he ended up going to Chelsea, and apparently, even at Chelsea, like some of the, you know, sort of officials were like, they didn't like the fact that they had to do that. It's just that you know, Abramovich said, "Yeah, just do it, man." Yeah, but yeah. two agents walked away. One with five million, one with six million. I mean. When you look at that, you can understand why they wouldn't sign somebody like a Kante. But do you think when things like that happen that they need to tell the fans that? Because maybe if they had told the fans that at the time, um, you know, we might have we might have understood it more rather than it's just left. Nobody says anything, and you think to yourself, yet again, Arsenal have let a player of that quality go. You know, why didn't we sign him? Yeah, you know, you, the way I look at it, Rob, is we have to get with the times, and that's been a part of our decline in the last decade. Like not getting with the times, we've been too slow to move into the times. We still haven't moved into them times, and that's spending mm. money. Because if you want to win the big things, if you want, it's easy to say it, but it's 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 harder to show. And we haven't shown in the transfer market that we want to win the big things. So, I, in my opinion, now, nah, like I, I, that, that that that's just how I see it. Your player of the season so far? Uh, probably Saka. Probably Saka. Martinelli or Saka, definitely. But I, I'd, I'd give Saka the nod because he's he's had to acclimatise to a new role, a difficult role yeah. at that age. 
coming on against Man City, I think it was first and foremost mm. at half time. And he's done it with a plum. Like he lo- he looks comfortable there. He's and uh, and uh, uh, another player is not signed up. Yep, another <laughs> player that's not signed up. Another player that's not signed up. And at the end of the day, that's again part of the downfall, Rob. It's part it's part and parcel of what's happened over the last decade. So it's sad to see it's still happening. You know, mm. it's sad to see. We can laugh about it now because you've been hurt so many times that you have to just laugh now because the pain mm. just kind of wears away after a while, isn't it? Uh, so right now, it's, hopefully we can get stuff done. Like Oba, if, if in some way, shape or form, we can get that done in a sensible manner financially, mm. get that done because it's important for us moving forward. All right, Turkish, thank you very much for coming on today. Much nice appreciate it. I know it's late, man, so I really, really appreciate it. No, nah, well done for everything, you know. Well done for everything, Rob. No, nah, no worries, well man, no everything. worries. Thank you very much, man. The coronavirus has not just affected the world of football, but has affected everybody. But you know what? We can defeat it. If you're displaying any of the symptoms, always make sure that you self-isolate. I know it's a terrible time, but we will defeat the coronavirus. We will be back.